knife-wielding breakdowns, abusive relationships at 16, and kidnappings with a duffel bag, Marilyn Monroe's mother, Gladys Pearl Baker, had her fair share of transit. While we don't know much about Gladys Pearl Baker's childhood, we do know that she was born on May 27, 1902, and suffered from near poverty and undiagnosed schizophrenia. At age 16, she was married to 24-year-old John Newton Baker, who turned out to be abusive. Considering all this, it's not hard to understand why she chose to give away her daughter, Norma Jean, to foster care, only two weeks after she was born in 1926. Baker and her husband had two other children, Jackie and Bernice, before they got divorced in 1923. She received custody of the kids, but he kidnapped them and fled to Kentucky. It's unclear if Gladys then stayed behind in California or moved there. At one point, she briefly remarried to Martin Edward Mortensen, from whom Marilyn Monroe gets her legal last name. But Gladys claimed that Monroe's father was actually a co-worker at Consolidated Studios named Charles Stanley Gifford. Gladys and Mortensen separated after less than a year, and Norma Jean's paternity remained unclear her entire life. Her early years were spent in a stable, very religious home in Hawthorne, California, with her foster parents, Ida and Wayne Bolander. Meanwhile, her mother barely made ends meet as a film cutter at RKO Radio Studios in Hollywood. Gladys Pearl Baker wanted to play an active role in her daughter's life, but visits to the Bolander household and sleepovers at her apartment quickly turned dangerous. On one occasion, she showed up when Norma Jean was three and stuffed her in a duffel bag, though Ida Bolander managed to stop her. Over the years, Gladys continued to request the Bolanders return her daughter to her, but they refused, and Gladys tried to get herself together. By the time Norma Jean was seven in 1933, her mother had gotten a loan for a house and taken in actors George and Maud Atkinson to help cover costs. Alas, this brief upturn in fortune came to an end later that year. Gladys received news that her son Jackie had died. Almost the same time, she learned that her grandfather hanged himself and her entire studio was going on strike. Then, in 1934, she suffered a nervous breakdown. Reports described her wielding a knife in public and claiming that someone was trying to kill her. She was then institutionalized at a state hospital in Norwalk, California. To learn that she was my mother uh, was quite a shock. It was um, the red hair. This is where things get truly horrific for both mother and daughter. Norma Jean's foster care passed to Gladys' friend Grace McKee. Around this time, the future movie star's aspirations started to take off. McKee was a busy lady, though, and she asked the judge to grant Norma Jean half-orphan status, which allowed her to live intermittently with other caregivers. While Norma Jean passed between 10 homes and one orphanage from 1935 to 1942, her mother passed between hospitals, and they saw each other only sporadically. In 1942, a 16-year-old Norma Jean married a police officer named James Doherty, but that marriage ended in 1946, the same year that Gladys was released from San Jose's Agnews State Hospital. She said that she was going to move to Oregon to live with her aunt, but instead she married John Stuart Ely, who already had a wife back in Idaho. The mother and daughter were seeing each other a bit at this point, and when Norma Jean tried to warn Gladys about her new husband's other marriage, Gladys reportedly said, That's how much Norma Jean hates me. She'll do anything to ruin my life because she still believes I ruined hers. Gladys also disapproved of her daughter's career choice. Meanwhile, the studio wanted to bury any information about their new star's mother. As Marilyn Monroe began to star in movies in the late 40s and early 50s, she went along with the story that 20th Century Fox urged her to tell. Her parents had died and she was an orphan, and she had no idea who they were. This led to no less than five women falsely claiming to be her mother. Gladys Baker, meanwhile, was going around saying the same thing, but nobody believed her. In 1952, a columnist found Gladys working at a nursing home in Eagle Rock outside of Los Angeles. The story blew open and Monroe confessed the truth. When this revelation hit the news, Gladys suffered another mental breakdown. This time, she was institutionalized in Rock Haven Sanitarium in La Crescenta, California. The following year, Monroe's career exploded thanks to the release of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Gladys then wrote letter after letter to her daughter begging to be released from Rock Haven. Monroe reportedly visited the sanitarium before her mother was admitted and found it to be highly disturbing. But instead of establishing direct contact, she sent her mother a monthly allowance. She also left her $5,000 a year in her will from a $100,000 trust. Gladys lived in Rock Haven all the way through her daughter's death in 1962. Please, Mother, what do you think I should do? I think that you should stop coming to see me because you never ask me how I'm doing. The year before Marilyn Monroe's death in 1961, she confessed to having suicidal ideations. The press caught wind, the story aired on TV, and Gladys was found in her room with her left wrist slit. A year after her daughter died, Gladys climbed out of a window at Rock Haven. She then climbed a wire mesh fence and walked 15 miles to a church on Foothill Boulevard. She huddled near a water heater for warmth in the church's utility room. When the police found her, she said she'd run away to practice Christian science teaching. She was then taken back to Rock Haven. 
She was eventually released and moved to Florida, where she died of heart failure in 1984. There's been speculation that Monroe inherited an unspecified mental illness from her mother, though she was never diagnosed. There is indeed a genetic component to mental illness, although shared environmental factors between parents and their kids can make it hard to pinpoint. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK-8255.